All right, Nate Rebel Liners here with a, another video for you guys. This is a really big movement right now. It's a big sensation. Everybody's making their own and sticking them in their AC units. I call it a cob job. It's a mess. Um, it's, it's nowhere near as efficient from what I understand. That's why we're making this video, and maybe I'll be proven wrong. RV airflow claims anywhere, I believe, from 40 to 48% more efficient, and you will see that kind of results in an in, in exchange of, of making your own. Uh, making your own uh, people are showing that it does somewhat approve uh, But from my understanding this will be a massive improvement Stay tuned to this video to check it out and uh, our test. We will be testing all events We will um, only show one in the video on all three tests when I say all three tests We're gonna be doing a test doing the AC unit with no modifications stock factory We will then make our own Unit that will go in it. We'll show that test and then at the end, we'll put the RV airflow systems and see what the difference is at the end. So check this video out to see how it's done right. I talked to four out of the five manufacturers, I believe. Three of them are no response. One of them responded that if you make your own unit and stick it in there, it does void the warranty. How will they prove it if you take it out? Well, anything's arguable. On that note, RV airflow systems is working directly with the manufacturers now. You can now order these campers and spec of this unit be in the AC unit right from the manufacturer. So pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people feel they're pricey. What they don't realize is what this machine costs to engineer and make these systems. This is all about smooth flow. Uh, there's a lot of loss of air inside that AC unit. The particular AC unit that we'll be working on in this video is a Dometic Brisk Air 2. It's probably one of the most common ones. Uh, RV Airflow, if you go to their website, check them out at RV Air flow.com you'll see they make one for most all brands we'll go over the instructions and then of course we will do a full video on all three tests so check this video out <laughs> temperature down and what it stays at in here and I bought the CFM reader here because we're gonna put it on one of these vent systems okay one of these vent holes and show you how much more efficient it is when the air comes out of it between the cob job system and the regular system so this is gonna be a pretty cool um, this is the Dometic okay and I'll get the official part number and everything on it but this is the Dometic unit here okay I'll try to zoom in on it for you Everybody's got different units. Um, AC Airflow makes them for all the different units. You just got to know which one you have. This current unit is the Dometic. It's the one that I'm most familiar with. I have replaced tons of them in my lifetime. Uh, we're going to show you how easy it is to get into here. And at that point, I'll show you that if you were to uninstall it, what you would do. There's nothing to it at all. So we'll make this a dual purpose video. And uh, we're going to make ourselves a cob job. And we're going to pull that crap cob job out. And we're going to put the real bad boy in there. And I'll show you when we get there what this looks like. All right, guys. So during this test video, what we're going to do here is we are going to do the vent obviously closed. Okay. Because the new cob job system and the proper engineer system is not going to allow that master vent anymore. So again, I can't state enough. If you don't do anything to your AC unit, fine. Okay. But when you first get there, you want to open that up, get the cool air, dump it in here really good, and then close it a couple hours in so it starts blowing it around to the different features. Another good trick on a really hot day is, and we're not going to do this because this test we're doing doesn't involve tricks, okay? We're going to leave this door open if we weren't doing our test. We're going to leave this door open, and what we're going to do here, okay, if this was a regular day and we weren't doing testing, we leave this door open, and the big secret that a lot of people don't know is hot air rises. So we go up into this fifth wheel, okay, and we have this fancy unit. Check out my other videos, you'll see. I have a cap put on, so this is open even in the rain. And when you turn this bad boy on, it's going to get loud, okay? 
what we're doing now is pulling the air as it gets cooler outside through along with the AC running. This is in a Wolfpack 365-16. All you guys have these features, trust me. Okay, you may not have a big enough fan. You might not have a fan capable of this CFM. But this would be cheating for our test right now, okay? And that's on high. So I could feel the air right now being sucked out cooler and getting the hot air out of here. We're not going to do that. We're not going to cheat. We're going to close this bad boy, okay? We're, we're going to close this for the testing on all of them so it's all done the same. We are going to close the master dump that I showed you here. And we're going to close the door. I'm going to write the time down. I'm going to turn the AC on, and we're going to see how long it takes us to cool down. And let me tell you, it's a hot day here in New York. I will make sure I write what the temperature is outside. All right, guys, I was quiet there for a minute because obviously that decimal reader, you can see now that I'm talking, uh, we're up into the 80s, uh, 78. Uh, it's reading noise. So as I get quiet, this is obviously, like I told you, all testing. The main dump is closed. My vent up top is closed. The door is closed. And I also did close the door on the garage. We're just testing this room, okay? Uh, we got the thermostat set at 71, um, and we are all day long 85 degrees currently at the thermostat. Um, you can see that it's on cool, and it's on auto, and this is our test. Right, here's our decibel meter of the noise that the AC unit unaltered, okay, Unaltered, this is what it's putting out. Obviously, as I talk, it jumps into the 80s. So I think we'd be safe to say that the stock unit runs with no altercations made, right around the 65 to 68 mark. And we'll see how long it takes for this camper to cool. I can feel the cold air coming out of the ductwork, and I'm gonna get my CFM reader and get my CFM reading while we're doing this while the, everything is stock. Again, the camper itself is showing 80.4, the outside temperature of just the camper today. Um, it's cooling down. We're going to keep the test going, and it's currently 626. Uh, we're going to do our test here. We're going to do MSs first. This is on the stock AC unit. Nothing done to it. Uh, it looks like we're going to give it a look in here, 3.0. 3.0 on the stock unit, measured in MSs. And then for giggles, we'll do miles per hour. Uh, some people will relate easier to miles per hour. And in the miles per hour measurement, uh, let me get the button here, one second, and we'll get this switched over to miles per hour. And in miles per hour, we are going to give it the, it looks like 6.5 on the high end, 60, 63, 65. All right, so the unit stock, and I don't really expect this to change much, but maybe it will. The temperature in that ductwork, it's a double laser beam, taking two points of temperature. Okay, we're getting about 58, okay, 58.8 degrees up in that ductwork, all right, and at least we know the AC unit puts out cold air, uh, but as you can see, the ceiling is still in the high 70s, uh, where the ductwork's not, uh, we're still in the high 80s. Um, it's been, I don't know, 17 minutes since I officially started this test. And I'm not noticing a whole lot of change in temperature, other than I do feel some air. 
of, you know, obviously cool air as I walk around blowing out of the ducts. So we're still on the stock test and we're seeing how long it takes. But that door closed, the gate is coming out of the vents. Right at 7 p.m. Temperature's still dropping down outside, which isn't overly helping my theory. But at the same time, it's only a couple degrees. I just want to show you, this AC unit has not been, nothing's changed. I haven't done anything. I've left it on with all specifications that I said I did. And I don't even know for sure. I'm testing it myself right now. We're 81 degrees, okay? I think we've come down, what, four to five degrees? It's taking forever. I can see why people are complaining. Um, you know, again, if this if this main duct is closed, so you're not doing the dump, so you're not just letting it dump in to cool it down quickly. If you're just running on a vent system, it's taken a long time, and I can show you that. You know, we're still coming out pretty cold. I mean, it's coming out of that duct at 52.3 degrees. Uh, I will show you a lot of loss here too. Uh, out of that duct even close we're you know we get anywhere from 54 to 56 degrees and that's close so i wanted to show that and i think that's important to show that it's losing there um that's straight out of that now that's where the air comes in and that's where the filter is you can see it's 80 some degrees uh we're 68 now because it's blowing off the side of that but that's where the hot air is going in the cold air is then being you know taken care of up top here and then it's shooting it out the duct system you know wherever the ducts may be it's shooting them all out so interesting we're only an hour in and we've gained uh, maybe five degrees uh, we're gonna continue to let it go and I got 78 there that time our one hour test and I think that's all we're gonna do is a one hour test unless I find results to be drastically different uh, I'm going to do a one hour test and just to show you that the temperature outside 69.9 and we're still averaging high 70s in here so we will continue to do this here and we'll we'll see what we what we get and I'm pretty sure I'm going to end this at the hour mark so stay tuned for the next do it yourself or is what we're going to do next and see what that does in an hour We'll see how different it is in our dust bowl reader. All right, folks, here we are in my Wolfpack 365-16. We talked about this when we did the demo of its stock. We're now doing the make your own event system. And then, as you know, the last part of the video will be the real one. I'm going to show you the difference. Um, real simple, I'm going to pop these white plugs out of each side. <clears throat> and we'll talk about some stuff while I'm up here. Um, I'm just using a pocket knife to peel it back. Usually it's going to fall and hit the ground. Flathead screwdriver would suffice. Okay. So we know that the hot air comes in here. The cold air, okay, if this is open, dumps here right next to the hot air. So think about that to begin with. And if it's closed, it takes it to the vent system, and that's where we're losing a lot. I did test and just felt the air with it closed that was being lost. So... Our goal here is to direct this airflow. So first we pull our filter down. That's gonna expose the other two Phillips screws. So we've got four Phillips screws here. Uh, remember to shut the breaker off to the AC unit. And we're gonna take these out. Not much to it here. There's actually, I lied, there's six. What you see falling out is what we call stink bugs around here. And it has been a battle for a while here with me and stink bugs. All right, we're going to take this piece right off, hand it to somebody. Don't flip it over. You're going to want to dump it outside. Thanks to the stink bugs. Okay, and once we're there, we've got that piece out. And we're going to, we have to remove this whole metal bracket. And then the main four bolts that actually hold the AC down. I've replaced many of these, okay? There's not much that hold these things on the roof. And we're gonna talk about how many inch pounds it's gonna to take to retighten this properly. Because tight is tight, too tight's broken. 
and this is something that you do not want to mess up. This is a Brisk Air 2, okay? Um, there's not a lot of rocket science to this. That's the electric box screw coming out. And I'm going to pull this other one. It's going to hang down out of my way. And we're going to have to remove um, everything you see to get this all dropped down and get us into this air box. Okay. So we'll start preparing for that. And stay tuned. Three eighths. All right. We're going to continue here uh, dropping our electric box because when we pull that metal bracket that I'm about to do, it's going to swing down. It's attached to it. Three eighths on the AC unit. These are those long bolts. This is not something you want to strip out. got some sticky stuff holding it around we're going to remove the styrofoam portion of this on the plenum it all should pull down with it and the plenum up there that's that's what they're using to direct to direct this it's it's absolute um it's really poor engineering um it's cheap and it's done cheaply this whole piece is all going to be removed off i'll show you that the sticker for the ac unit actually came off i might actually stick that somewhere that's kind of important information and uh, we'll go get all the stink bugs off of that. This is just gonna fold down out of our way for now. We got some other um, crap we're gonna tear out that was there. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like up here. And there's not much to it, there's really not. So um, this would probably stick here. And what I'll also do is because this sticker's off, when I get these exposed like this, I'll take a photo of this sticker and save it in my phone in the camper file. So if and when this AC will eventually go, trust me, um, I'll know exactly what model it was. I know it's a Brisk Air 2, but I'll have all the information I need to make sure I'm getting an exact fit. So we see our fan wheel up there. We see our ductwork, okay? On each side, this is our ductwork. And this is where the air, when you close that, is forcing the air to go into those holes and then distribute out the ducts. The problem is, is it's just poorly designed and it's not smooth. So there's a lot of loss. A lot of this cold air is getting sucked right back into the hot air and it's not really getting distributed anywhere. So when you see us making these, is what they're doing is, is they're making a smooth V pattern that's gonna direct the air straight in to each duct. You remember, you will lose the big open but it's gonna distribute the air through the camper a lot smoother. Electric box is just pulled out of the way, like I said. You can see where the four main bolts went, nothing serious, and we may have to notch that out in our homemade um, kit that we're gonna make right now, but that's it. And you can see the tapes poured, I mean, we were, I was losing a lot of air in this. This will all get retaped, and we'll get this piece making. Uh, next is measurements, so I know what size to cut my styrofoam. All right, so we're going to take our measurements. The first uh, measurement we need is across the plenum here because we're going to have a dividing wall where the hot air goes up and the cold air will distribute. So uh, my buddy's writing them down as we see it. We're 14.5 inches on the dividing wall. That'll be piece number one, okay? Piece number two will be our ductwork. So from the fan, it's shorter here, it's longer here. We need a piece that's going to come down and we got to figure out what measurement that's going to be. And that looks like it's going to be, because of where the dividing wall will sit, it's going to be 6 by 8. And then the short piece is going to be um, the, I believe I measured it already, it's going to be the 4 inches by the 8 and 1 fourth. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. 4 inches by 8 and 1 fourth. And then um, we'll have our whole bottom piece, and that measurement is going to be our... 14.5 and then to the dividing wall which would be the eight um, the correction i'm looking at it be the 9.5 the inch difference there is because i'm using one inch foam 
So I want that wall to sit flush against the divider wall between the cold and the hot. But on that bottom piece I'm talking about, we'll also, and I don't have the measurement yet, is where we're going to make another V so it scoops the air into each air port. So we've got the measurements all figured out, and now we're going to go cut them. Some of you will have a metal wall on there. There's different things to do on different AC units. This particularly is the brisk air too. Um, a lot of people will take painter's tape here and mark where the bolt holes are. If you have a more complicated unit, I don't need to do that. We may have to notch out where the bolts are gonna go through with the styrofoam and then we could put some tape around it, which we'll do. We've got our dividing wall in here. We wanna set this dividing wall right at the edge, okay, of that hot air intake, okay? So the hot air intake starts right here. I'm right at the edge wall. I'm gonna tape that in there, is what I'm gonna do. I will then take our bottom fit piece, and we did have to trim this a little bit more from original measurement, it's no big deal. And our bottom trim piece is gonna come in flush to it. But before we can put all this together, what we have to do is we have to build our pattern here. So with a marker or a pocket knife or a screwdriver, uh, my marker is not immediately coming. What I'm going to do to make our life easy on this bottom piece when it comes time is I'm just going to hold it up here and I'm going to mark center of the squirrel fan hole because this center line that I just drew, okay, right here, this is where our pattern or our V is going to go to direct the ear up. So I mark the center of that. As long as I'm looking at it like that when I go to do it, I know we now have the center. And we're going to build that here, but I'm not ready for that. First thing we have to do is come up here on the inside and get our pieces ready for the into each side of the duct down. Okay, so we're going to get those pieces ready right now. All right. I disconnected some of the wires here that went to the box. They're all one-way plugs for electrical. It was just so I can move it around because I'm going to need to refasten it up in here. We've done a really good job so far. We've got our, um, in the plenum here, we've got our smooth spots dropping down into each vent. I'll give you a better close up here. Uh, we've got our bottom piece almost ready. We've got our uh, center wall taped in on the inside. And now the bottom piece is getting the uh, V put on it. And we'll show you that before we place it in. Tape it all up really, really good. I've re-taped everything in the inside so this test is done properly. And we'll be in business shortly. Right. So here's our piece that we made. As you can see, it's off centered using measurement to where our center divider is going to go. It's all taped up as smooth as possible. I've seen a lot of videos of people not taping these tight, guys, and they're leaving the styrofoam. The air is going to go in there and you're going to lose some. Everything is sealed the way it should be. I want this test to be as accurate as possible. And then that's all we're going to do is take this piece now. I got to make sure I got it right. Oh, oh sorry. It does go that way. My partner says. And I'm going to put it up here. And that's going to be it. And I'm going to tape it up. You got to make sure you get the wires out of the way. And I'm going to tape it up. But before I do that, he's going to, um, I'm going to take a camera in there. I just had this cupped up out of the way right now. I'm going to get a camera up in here because I want you to see what was physically done and how well it was done. Because I don't want anybody telling me that I didn't do my best on this test because maybe this is as good. We're gonna find out. So um, we'll be with you here in a second. We're gonna show you the inside and what's going on. Again, here's the inside of our plenum, our duct, all taped up, ready to go. Go into our bad boy here. Now we're gonna get it in here. Yep. All right, now we're just going to tape our seams in tape our back seam here and put this bad boy back together not a lot to do here it's pretty simple none of this is super hard work and the only thing i'm forgetting to do and i'm going to stop for a second is we need to notch 
our holes out. So I'm glad I did not paint this yet. All right, I showed you the inside. We got our notches here for our bolts on the far back side. So all we're gonna do is pop this bad boy in here, just like so. Notches are there nice. And that's all I'm gonna do now is take some tape and we are going to tape this bad boy in. Uh, again, you could trim on the outside of it just a little bit. You don't wanna get too crazy. That molding will cover it up. Just fold that right up over and in. We're gonna tape the seam going this way, this way, all the way across, boxing this whole thing in. My partner's here getting my tape ready for me. So we can just keep on keeping on here. I have a little bit of cleanup here at the end, but no big deal. I guess what stinks is, is as you guys know, I really went all out on this because we're gonna tear it out and then put the real manufactured piece by AC, or I should say RV airflow systems, and prove or deprove that it's better or worse because no one wants to spend the money on it and they're all doing it themselves but i don't think they're really getting everything they could be people are doing this the cheap way because that's what we naturally do in life but sometimes you get what you pay for maybe i'm wrong maybe we're gonna debug this whole thing and and prove that you know it's not true uh, maybe we're gonna prove that this is just as good as the rv air flows we're gonna find out here and I'm going to finish taping up all the inside, and I'm going to get this box put back in, and we'll be ready to roll here. You can see the little tack welds on here. Some of these I've done go easier than others. Maybe it was done on a Friday. Whoever was tack welding on this machine or ramped up this machine up, he did a heck of a tack weld on this. I'll tell you that. Trying not to distort our metal underneath too much. Would help if I had a better service. And that's that. All right, two hands are better than one on this situation. Um, she's a little warped with torque. This side's the easy side because you could see the holes. And I was just telling my buddy here, this is not something you want to strip out. You will not be happy if you strip this out. I'm telling you right now, it would be a, it would be a pretty big deal if you were to strip this out. So we got to get these all started up and torque the spec. Okay. Out tight is tight, too tight's broken. I stopped recording there for a minute because I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of cuss words. Those two far bolts through a styrofoam, make sure you got that honed out good. We, we ended up getting them, but it did not go easy. So we're just gonna snug these all up, okay? Now, this is really important, okay? When I say tight is tight, two tights broken. 40 to 45 inch pounds, okay? Inch pounds. And we really wanna make sure we got that right, not foot pounds inch pounds so we go 45 inch pounds it's way up there right now so i'm setting my unit here my fancy torque wrench at 45 inch pounds okay so this thing will tell me when i'm there like I said, tight is tight, too tight's broken. You do not want to over tighten this. This is what holds the whole AC unit on the camper itself. Okay? So we're just going to go in a cross pattern and start tightening them up. And I can tell you right now, I can go a ways with that impact yet if I want. I'm not even reading. So we're going to tighten them up.
Okay. All right. We got our 40 to 45 inch pounds all the way around. And the next thing is this box for testing purposes is gonna stay here. I would probably try to get it a little flatter to the wall, but we know we're gonna install. So I'm just gonna tape it actually, just like I've seen other people do and recommend. We're just gonna tape it right to the wall, um, right here. So we'll secure that right against the wall. I just wanna show those tabs. There's one left on there, there's one I got off. If you just score it with a razor blade, they'll pop right off. There's four of them, they do need to be removed. Make sure you remove all the tabs. Our four, to four tabs are scored off. The piece will now sit in there properly. And we'll put our Phillips screws back in there. I got it all right here, ready to go. Get one ready on here. You don't want to strip this stuff out either. You won't be happy with the results. I can promise you that. Nothing to it. Not going to bother putting the round pieces in down there that we popped out with the pocket knife because I'm just going to pop them out again. Put the RV airflow system in. That's not going to affect any of our stuff. Everything's taped really well. This duct now no longer means anything. You're just going to close it. We got a brand new filter on here just so we don't restrict any airflow. We're going to Oh, it would help if I went the right way. We're going to pop our filter back in here. All right, so our AC is just kicked on. And we're going to the vents. Same system, same everything. Uh, the same with the fan up there. There's no fan on up top. Uh, we've got all our tools and everything still out. We may not get to part two on this with the RV airflow system yet. But we're going to start doing some tests. So I'm going to get quiet here. We're going to look at our decibel meter. Just to clarify the time, it's 5.29 p.m. And our test has begun. Real quick voiceover, just so it doesn't affect the meter. Uh, definitely got results. Uh, it's definitely a bit quieter than so, the stock. So we got the homemade one still going. It hasn't been that long, but I just want to show the same test that I did on the last one. It's 5.36. So we go to the duct and we're getting 55 degrees coming out of that bad boy. The ceiling is still maintaining um, in the high 70s. Um, let's see, we did that one before. We still got 84 over there by the door. We come up to the duct and you can see the hot air coming in is about 78 and that's now shut off. And as you can see, when I come to that now, when I put them on where it used to leak, you can see that that don't leak there anymore at all. So that's pretty cool. Um, the duct is closed upstairs. And the doors are closed, so I'm talking about the top vent, just like the original test. It is closed, just to show you that it is closed. And we're just waiting to see in our one hour test how quick this will cool in here. And I'm outside just showing you the outside temperature. We're 80, 87 up there. Same place I tested it last time. We're 84 to 83 degrees right here. All right, guys, so it's been almost a little bit more an hour. It's, I want to show you the watch here. It's 6.44 p.m. And I'm going to be honest with you, I expected it to be colder in here. Um, the top corner up here is still 79 degrees. Again, uh, there's 81. It's come down probably, what, four degrees? Um, the floor is 75. The air coming out of the ducks are 50 degrees um all the same settings as the last nothing in here has changed and other than making it quieter i don't really know if i gained anything and i'm gonna be honest with you i didn't anticipate this um i i i really didn't anticipate it to be um and i'm even i've even got one factor that is different i have the awning because the sun is right on the camper and I didn't have the awning even out last time. So you would think that this camper, that's the only thing different that I'm doing right now from when I did the test without making this modification. 
So I'm not overly impressed right now. And I'm not just saying that because I want it to be this way. Um, I really expected it to do a little bit more. Now, there's no doubt it made it quieter. And, and maybe an hour test isn't enough. Maybe I should do a four hour test on these. I mean, that, 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 is, that is possible. So stay tuned because I'm gonna let it run for a little bit longer and see what happens. I did a voiceover on this. My kids in the background making racket. You can hear the door open. Uh, with that being said, uh, these are our MS's on the cob job. And on the cob job MS's, uh, I gave it a 3.5, 3.5 MS's. And now I'll switch it to miles per hour. And on the miles per hour on our homemade unit here, uh, give me a second here. And 7.8 was the highest I saw on the miles per hour. 7.6 there. Uh, we're gonna call it 7.8 miles per hour on the homemade cab job. I've given this test more than its chance. Um, obviously I wanna get this RV airflow in here and I'm just showing you. I mean, we've come down, we're 76 degrees and it was what the time here is 7 18 p.m this test started at 5 was it 5 30 this test started uh this test started at 5 30. Uh, definitely quieter um i guess considering may, we'll say maybe it cooled it down a little bit quicker again quieter for sure but at this point i don't see i'm not seeing huge results I personally see better results at opening up the center vent that you can't use anymore and dumping all that cold air in right away. And I, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but when I first bought my camper many, many moons ago, the salesman taught me that you open that center vent when you first get to the campsite and you let it run an hour with that open. And that's gonna cool it, the, the room down really quick. And then you close the vent and then it circulates it. Um, obviously there are issues here with the hot air going in and the cold air coming out next to each other and you're mixing up in there and you're not getting what you should get um, I'm not gonna say that this didn't do anything but an awful lot of cob job and I'm sorry it's a cob job up there um, to get what we've gotten and I'm not sure if it's hundred percent worth it I guess at this point I'll say it's worth doing it definitely quieted it down drastically in here and I definitely can feel more airflow coming out of the vents, but I'm not sure if the numbers and that really provide my evidence that it's that much better. Um, let's find out what the RV airflows is gonna do. We're now gonna tear this whole thing out. Getting ready to take out the homemade cop job that everybody thinks works so great. And we're going to put in the RV airflow. I am now going to speed up the video. speed um that's gonna be really quick because that was really quick to take out <laughs> it definitely takes a lot more to put all that together than to take it out um it's a little um uh, you feel some condensation up here obviously because this was the cold air out and this side of course is warm because that was the hot air coming in um i did some uh tape i mean i need some tape i gotta fix some of it ripped out with the pieces that i tore out so i'm just gonna come in here and make sure everything is still uh, nicely taped and done well and I will get back to um, installing the RV airflow um, will be our next goal. And we will show you that box here in a second and we will get stuff started. But when I tore this out, it took some of it with it. Not the big deal. It's not like this stuff is crazy money. I'll just go around and make sure we got everything sealed up. So I wasn't really paying attention to open the box. I opened it up upside down. 
but uh, this is it. I mean, guys, this is what you're all trying to mock or make yourselves. No rocket science to it at all. Again, the machine that makes this is insanely expensive. This whole thing is literally just going to go and pop up inside of it. Should be a lot quicker of an install. Uh, we also have the um, shuck pieces that we got to make sure we get right. There is an up and a down on this, so we got to make sure we got that right. And uh, just some packing foam. And in here we have some foam pieces. And everyone talks about how great their instructions are. So we are going to look over these instructions uh, real briefly and then make sure that we're doing everything the way they want us to and get this bad boy going here. And um, they've got a lot of good information on here on how to contact them if there's any problems or questions. I'll put all that in the bio down below. It's got a list of all the stuff and what we're doing and how we're taking it apart. And we're going to get this underway here. All right, so we're just preparing these pieces because that's pretty much where we're at because everything you see here was already done. Um, it does matter whether these go up or down. And I'll figure that out in a second because honestly, I do not know. I believe they go up. That's all we're doing is now is putting um, this double-sided foam. So when I say double-sided, it's double-sided sticky. Uh, the yellow portion down that he just peeled off on one side and the white will be up. And that's going to go up there in our vent. And we're just preparing both those vents right now. Pretty simple. Real brief. Uh, any instructions, make sure you check out. Did It did not fit. Okay, a lot of people have these problems. The instructions are right here. Uh, this is where it goes into the plenum, into the ductwork, this piece. And make sure you check out how it's properly done. If yours doesn't fit right. And on the back side is another. It did not fit. And that's the styrofoam unit that goes on the inside. So... It's all right here, and it's laid out pretty well. All right, so I got it in. I was able to torque it and get it in there. And boy, when they say tight fit, that was an understatement on the tight fit. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I mean, I really, 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 really had to use some serious force to get it in there. I mean, you're not going to really hurt anything. Um, I'm just taping it in now the same way I taped the other one in. And we'll look at the instructions to see what is our next step. I don't think there's a, honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of steps left. All right, so the AFS pieces, are, they're calling them, um, into the plenum, into the ductwork, okay, are both in very tight fits. Uh, they were a real fight. Now we're just going to take the styrofoam piece. We're going to make sure it goes back as far as it can. And usually putting it on an angle like this and rolling it up in there. All right, I'm gonna give it a couple of taps to the rear and up, and I am going to tape that in there, leaving these holes empty. I'm gonna put tape around it to make sure it's sealed. And we're gonna put this thing back together. So um, let me just get at this real quick, and we will continue to keep on keeping on here. So like I said, I'm just gonna tape this in Real simple I'll show you what it looks like here in a second all right so here we are I got it all taped in holes are ready to go units installed on goes the metal piece and that'll be it let's see what happens here Started. We're getting the back to it now. You can feel them. You can feel them go in, and then we'll retorque these to the proper specification here. Um, don't over tighten. You can see the metal frame suck right up in there. That's what we're looking for. just as it was with the Phillips screws right back in here to hold our electrical component it makes life 
easy. But definitely a lot less screwing around with this uh, bought unit than uh, making your own. There was a lot of time to make your own. I didn't record a lot of it because I couldn't believe how long it was taking. Um, this here, there was nothing to installing this. Honestly, uh, it was pretty quick. It was a lot less of a hassle. And there's no doubt it's way better of a fit. But it's also engineered. So, I guess it should be. Alright, I got them at 43. Not sure if you can see that or not. And that's it. I'm all torqued to spec. She's all tightened now. And now we're going to put the uh, plastic piece back on. careful with them. They get brittle and they could want to break. I have spares I keep on hand because it's happened to me. Um, that's really it. That's the end. Uh, we're done. So we take our, that was our first step. And they're just pretty pieces I call them. There's nothing more to them than that because they're recessed holes. And the rest they have hidden underneath the filter. That pretty much does it uh, quick voiceover before i start talking this is the rv airflows uh the quietest reading yet unbelievable the difference that i'm hearing and my wife the rv airflow has even admitted it see as low as five six and a little below it so that's huge huge numbers way quieter quietest yet in the rv airflow All right, guys, here we are on the final test um, with the airflow systems installed. It's been a bit since I've been able to do this test because we actually went on a huge camping trip. As you can see the date and uh, time today. Um, we're going to do the same test. All things are similar. Uh, everything's the same with the vent. Uh, the back door closed. We'll do our airflow and see what we're going to get this down. It's a super hot day. I think it's hotter than most of the days I've been in here. Um, that's 105 degrees up there. Um, it is not cool in this camper right now and we will see what one hour will do current time is 608 all right the first test will be our MS's showing you what we're getting on our MS's 6.0 on the MS's that is huge huge it's the most we've seen yet everything's done being done the same here folks and we'll do our miles per hour a minute here all right we got our miles per hour uh, here's our miles per hour just down here with it just blowing on it it's reading that here comes our miles per hour 13 point wow that's the most we've seen uh, solid 13.6 12.5 13.2 miles per hour 13.6 four Wow, that is the biggest results we've seen yet. That is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Holy cow. Again, back to our MS's. Come on, light. Back to our MS's here. 6.0, 6.5. Six point nine there. That is insane. That is the biggest results we have seen yet. We've used the same vent on every test. Airflow systems. I, I mean, if you could just, I don't know if you can see the curtains blowing here. It's unbelievable how much more air that that system is putting out right there. It's insane. Absolutely insane to me that that is working that well. Holy cat! So let's see what happens in an hour. Here, the sun. The temperature in the sun is 135 degrees and in the shade right up here is I'll show you 95 degrees this is the hottest day i've done this test on yet 
So we're really putting this airflow systems to test. Unreal. un and real and that's with the vent cap still on it so it's, it's it's angled unreal the results i'm seeing out of this all right so we started this test it has not been long at all i think it was 608 when we started it's only what is it 626 and i said you know what that was the hottest corner let's just check it quick and it, it's already down below 10 degrees up there. How is that even possible? Like, are you seeing this? I am dumbfounded right now. We're not even a half an hour into this. I hit the vent there. That don't count. 83 degrees there. I mean, that's insane. How cool this is getting in here. This fast. It's the hottest day I've done this on yet. Like, it's absolutely insane. Crazy. 95 on that one. It was still a hundred and something when I started. I'll have to replay the video to know, but we're still here doing the test. And there is the current time. It's 6.27 p.m. Alright guys, so here we are. It's 7.09. It's um, come on, focus. There you go. 7.09 p.m. It's been just about an hour. All right, so it's been our one hour, and we've seen, uh, I'm gonna check our results here. This corner was 100 and some degrees when we started. So uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, 77 degrees, okay? You see it, 77 there. Uh, that's the, the 79 in the very corner. That's some massive uh, results there, guys. Uh, we've not seen any results like this at all. RV airflow, we're, right now, we're showing numbers in the 42 to 45 percent increase. We're pushing the numbers here on paper right now between stock, our cob job, our cob job. We're getting almost 28 percent more. Uh, don't hold me them numbers. I'll try to get it all in the bio on the bottom. But massive, massive, uh, just massive difference. Uh, that's a vent there. Uh, massive difference that we're seeing though. Um, that's one hour test. It's a little over one hour now. Um, and here it is, so you don't think I'm lying. There's the date on my phone watch and everything. The focus is, um, wow. Build your cop job, fine. You're going to gain a little bit, but I can promise you, you're never going to gain what the RV Airflow is putting out. Never going to happen. So do what you will. Um, believe what you want. The owner of RV Airflow, he is awesome. Um, they've had so much research. These machines cost a monster money to make these inserts for these you're not going to top it. I'm convinced. They've got me convinced. I'm convinced. Um, I'm also know for a fact that he has emails from the manufacturers of several of the AC units who have done their own testing and is now offering them in the units right from the manufacturer and the dealerships when you buy the campers and it does not void your warranty. I've got some other guys that I've been arguing with on YouTube and stuff and I try not to. They're claiming that the cob job, I call it the homemade cob job, doesn't void your warranty. It will void your warranty. Can they tell if you take it out? Maybe not, but if they really want, you are pulling some you know, pieces out of there and breaking, uh, you know, as you saw in the video, breaking stuff off of it. And they're gonna be able to tell. So spend the money, and do it right the first time. I came back to record this real quick. I'd actually ended the video. Obviously this will be edited, so it'll be before the end of the video. Um, I, I'm in the garage right now of my 365-16 Wolfpack. Okay, that's where we did all the testing. Um, I just wanna show you something, okay? I am 81 degrees in here. Um, it was well over 107 in here when I started. So that is that is crazy. Um, those two ducks, like we talked about, is all that's coming in here. I've added this real quick. It'll be edited before, like I said, because a lot of guys are adding a third AC unit here. I think they're wasting their time. Maybe different atmospheres, maybe Arizona or something crazy. You do that. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, with the RV airflow, them are putting out a lot of air in here. No, it probably ain't going to get as cool as it is in there. But I'm telling you right now, there's a huge difference in here. I mean, you guys can see the time. Like, that's insane. Um, it, it's doing something in here. And it never used to. It barely came out of those vents before. So, I just wanted to add that here. Sorry, the garage is a mess. 
Um, we just got back from that huge camping trip uh, two days ago. So I just wanted you to see the garage here and what the temperature was actually doing in here because I'm quite impressed. Um, I'm quite impressed by it, honestly. In case anybody wants to argue what the outside temperature was here in New York, the side of this camper, I got I to pull away, is currently 137 degrees in the heat. And up here in the shade, this camper is 95.3. So in case anybody wants to question how hot today was, um, the ground alone, the ground alone is anywhere around 81 to 87 degrees out here. So that's the ground. So just so you're aware how hot today really was, none of the other tests were even done this hot. Um, so I can only imagine, only imagine the results. Uh, to me, there's no argument here. So I mean, that's the end of it. RV airflow is the only way to go. I am totally convinced doing my own test. And so far from what I see, I'm the only one that's done my own test with all three. Stock, homemade, the real deal. The real deal is worth it. Uh, click on my link on the right-hand corner, Nate Rebel Liners. Please subscribe. It helps, guys. Hit subscribe, please. Until we meet again. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk to you soon. Keep it cool.